Hi, uh, in this demo we are going to look at uh, how to work with an Azure storage account uh, through the PowerShell. So basically to get started uh, we need to install the PowerShell commandlet package for, for Windows and uh, you can download it from the internet. So once you have installed your PowerShell commandlets you would see all these different commands which have the name Azure on it. So it basically means all these are the scripts which come in the package that you downloaded, right? So now the very first thing that you need to do after your you invoke the PowerShell is the login command. So basically this command will help you sign into your Azure account through PowerShell. Right? So here you enter the details of your So now once the sign in is successful, you would see the subscription is added to your PowerShell cache. So this subscription sign in is valid uh, for the session duration. So if you close this uh, PowerShell session or if you happen to reboot your machine, you may have to sign in again. Right? So now once you have signed in, we can go ahead and create a new resource group for keeping our storage account so the resource group requires a resource group name so you can enter um, something like this and then uh, you require a location as well so enter the location for the data center information and once you press enter the resource group is created so the next step is to create a storage account so the command is okay so you use the new resource uh, new azure rm storage account and specify the resource group resource group name that's the resource group name and then uh, specify a location queue name is nothing but uh, replication options that we selected in the portal the local replication or zone replication or geo replication so you may select any one uh, based on the requirement so basically uh, we are specifying the resource group name a location where to deploy a queue and we require to specify a name okay so it is important that we specify a unique name in the storage account so when you are designing an automation or automation script so it is required that you first check if the name is available right so once you hit enter once you hit enter the storage account is getting provisioned Okay, the storage account is provisioned, but let's go back and uh, uh, look at the case. Let's say when you happen to give a generic name when you want to create the storage account, it says that test is already taken. So, what if if you want to do it uh, uh, through a script, right? So we need to use the command a 
okay so this is the command to check if the storage account name is available okay so now I say get Azure storage account availability and I give name as store here in store okay so it says the name is available so I can go ahead and use it right so when you're designing automation first make sure you run the get Azure RM storage account availability command and then based on the response return the boolean flag true or false go ahead and use that name in the next command that is new azure rm storage account right okay so now let's go back uh, to the account that we created that is the store 9781 account right now if you go back to the portal you would see the, the account that we created from the PowerShell okay now let's go back and see how do we create a container and uh, a simple blob from the PowerShell. Now to be able to create a container or any blob in that storage account we require the storage key. So there are two ways. Uh, you can copy the storage key from the portal. Once you create the storage account come to the portal. But if you were designing automation you may have to get it programmatically or through the script right so now what you can do is you can use this command so with this command you can actually get the key right you require resource group name and you mention the storage account name okay okay so there are two keys so what you require is you need to store them in a variable okay so how do you do that is uh, the same command same command and you just say value and you're storing the key in that variable called dollar key one now what you're going to do is you can use the dollar key one and you get the actual key so you have both the key one and key two so what you're going to do is now we're going to create a context variable uses the storage account name and the storage account key which is in the variable dollar key So this is like a connection string and uh, 
now let's create the container require a name for the container and the permission is uh, you're setting the the access level of the container so off means private context is use the variable dollar context so that we know which storage account are we actually going to work with right now a container is created now let's uh, copy a blob So the command is set azure storage blob content. So you need to specify the file which you want to copy. Let's say I copy this file and then I mention the container. And then I use the context variable. So the blob is uploaded. Now let's go to the storage explorer and see whether we really have the blobs published. This is my storage account. As you can see, I can uh, see the file or the blob in my container test level which I just copied through the PowerShell okay so similarly you can uh, work uh, with the other storage resources that is tables queues and uh, file shares uh, using the PowerShell so all the commands are actually documented in this uh, word document or you can actually check the Microsoft documentation to see what else you can do with PowerShell for storage. Okay, so that's all I had in this uh, video. Thanks for your time.